Today we will continue building the micrometer and I think it's time to start making the dials. Uh, maybe this look more like stickers. And that is because of, indeed, they are stickers from Stuart Schnellegans. And Stuart, he's in the United States and he's got a brand new blue lathe. And in his latest video you can see just a glimpse of a new to him milling machine. So I'm really curious to know what it's gonna be. Now I would like you to visit his uh, YouTube channel because he has almost 1000 subscribers. And I think after this video we can help him reach more than 1000. So do it. So Stuart, as you can see, your sticker is on the cheap dog. And now over to the real deal, real dial. That according to the plan, of course, comes here and here. Now, the small one will indicate the opening in millimeters. Opening will be more or less 25 millimeters. So this dial will have graduations from 0 to 25. The big one, one rotation gives a movement of 1 millimeter. So the big dial will be divided in 100. One division gives 1 one hundredths of a millimeter with a total opening 25. And according to this plan, the thing should be made out of bronze. One millimeter thick bronze plate that of course I don't have, so I will make them out of sheet metal, steel, which is 0.8 millimeter. And as you can see, I already started a little bit. I cut out a more or less circle, which is too big, because of course I will make it two dimensions later. And my idea was to glue this thing with wood glue on a piece of wood. So I installed it in the milling machine and then found center, put glue on the, on the thing, found center and then pressed it together with a, another piece of wood to hold it nice and flat. And I think now you're gonna tell me that gluing a piece of sheet metal on wood with wood glue doesn't hold. Well, normally it does. It's not magic, but it holds. If you glue a piece of paper on sheet metal, good luck to have it off again. Except of course, this time this was glued together and I started drilling holes so I wanted to install some screws to hold it a little bit better and the thing came off. But because this is very close to finished size I cannot use it again because it's really complicated to center. So I started again and I took a bigger piece and now it's held in place with wood screws. And of course that also explains why I like to work with scrap and leftovers because it takes away the stress part. If I buy material, what I can do, not a problem, you don't have the right to screw it up. But now, because this is leftover sheet metal, as you can see, I can mess up a few times and start again. And even if I mess up so much that I used it all, no problem. I have more. I installed the dividing head and of course the spindle of my machine is now perfectly centered with the spindle of the dividing head. And my fuchsia dial comes here in the chuck. And my broken 10 mm drill bit will become really useful because I'm gonna make a D bit out of it 
and then I can engrave all the markings I need if it works. Let's find out. I installed one more little wood screw here exactly in the center because I couldn't have the thing straight. And now after a little bit of tapping there is less than one tenth of a millimeter of movement. And I think that will do. Right, let's make an engraving tool. I made a point at 90 degrees. Now don't copy this design yet because this is the very first D-bit I ever made so I have no idea what I'm doing here. Uh, first I'm going to take some test cuts on the outside rim here because all this is waste material and we'll see what happens. Nothing. I think it doesn't look too bad. The first one is one tenth depth of cut and then here two tenths and these two is three tenths. Now I think three tenths is too much but two tenths that could work. Right let's do a little bit more testing. I think it will work just fine. The circle I just made here is the outside diameter of the total part. And I think it will now be easier to rotate it without really cutting to make all these little other lines. I think, I hope, we'll see. I think the result is really great. So let's continue. Alright, I think it doesn't look too bad. Of course, it will look better when it's deburred and a little bit paint in it and all this. 
And according to the plan here, there are two circles that have no purpose, just to make it more beautiful. And I think I'm gonna put it in because as it is, it's good, but it looks a little bit naked. Before I can cut it out, of course I have to drill these two mounting holes here. So let's go for it. Ah, oh, again. And this is what I think the most scary part. The center hole here has to be 10 mm. And I would like to drill it out with this little end mill, nice and sharp, so it will have a nice round hole with a good finish. So first drill it die out with 9 mm drill bit, but there's not much support. And what could happen is that this whole plate is gonna lift when the drill breaks too and I don't want it to happen so wish me luck it worked That's good. Drilling out this center hole went perfectly fine. So I'm really happy with it. And now to cut this thing out, I think the easiest way is of course to take it off here, give it around in the bench shear, cut out the rough perimeters and then do a finishing on the belt sander. And that will be quick and easy. But, because I have a milling machine and I like to play with my milling machine, I'm gonna try something I don't think I ever did. I have a very cute little 4mm 4 fruit cutter. And what I would like to try is to cut it out with this thing. Now, why with this one? Because when I opened the drawer, this one was on top. That's all. To give me a bit more chances of winning this part, I'm gonna install one more screw here in the center with a few washes and of course it's really smart to first install the cutter and then the screw so you're almost certain to cut yourself while <sighs> okay okay screw hold I left three taps and now in fact only two, one here and one here. Let's see if I can take it out.
damn, I'm good. I think they will work just fine. But they need numbers. I gave these things a touch of Mickey Mouse, but I'm not really happy with the surface finish. I think it will look better if it gives a circle pattern. So let's try something. Yeah, a lot better. Let's give it a touch of paint. This dial need to be pressed on a tiny bit further. But I'm not gonna do this yet because behind here there has to be a little gear that I still have to make. So in the meanwhile maybe it gives you a little bit an idea of how it's gonna be. Now the other one that of course comes here in these two holes like this I suppose. I only have these flat head screws and I think on the dial they'll be in the way and look a little bit stupid. So my idea is to make them I have to tweak a bit more these little screws because I think there is too much stick out here but that won't be too much of a problem. Now if one day you want to make engravings and you don't know what tool to make, 90 degrees, it works. <laughs> 